We are all here to pay respect and tribute and honor Dylan's memory with our presence. But today I'd like to ask you to do a little more than that. I'd like you to carry on his life example. Don't let this day simply be an event that we attended, but a day where we resolve to live a life that makes a difference. A life of caring, of courage, and kindness. A life lived every day for others, looking for places to help and lend a hand, sitting and listening to someone who needs it, bringing a smile or a laugh to lighten the mood, or looking for that person who needs a friend. In short, live to honor others, and that will honor Dylan, because that is how he lived his life. John 15, 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that he may lay down his life for his friends. That's a challenge for us to live a difference, a life that makes a difference. That is the life of Dylan Webb. Live like Dylan task for today is to prepare our hearts for the future. This is the time to prepare our hearts for, for the future. Did you know that Dylan prepared us all for the future? He showed us how to live, and then he showed us how to die. He lived to serve, and he died serving. That's the way to live. I love the coffee said, live like Dylan. Amen to that. Live like Dylan. Now, not, not everybody is called to, to take an oath and to go into an unfair fight and to locate and close and destroy the enemy and put themselves in harm's way. But you can live a life of service like God in every, in every sense of the word. In closing, I'd like to take a moment for us to think about our future. What I mean is life beyond the grave. It's coming for us. We don't get to hang out here forever. It's going to be short. During the, the, the viewing, the last thing I did when when I saw Dylan's body is to put my hand on his chest. And just like Olivia and Grandma said, I said, buddy, this is not goodbye. This is see you soon. In fact, I said, see you Sunday. Because Sunday is a resurrection. Now, Dylan didn't really like Sunday because that's the day that Chick fil A is closed. <laughs> but it's the day that gives us hope. It is the day that gives us hope. So what gives us, what gives me and Olivia and Brandon and all them, what gives us the audacity to say, we'll see you soon? How, how do we know that? It's a pretty bold claim. Well, we look at the scriptures. And I stand here in agreement with Cheryl, Brandon, and Olivia and the family with utmost confidence that we believe we will see Dylan in the next life. Why? Because of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we know. That's why we can stand here and say that. Now, between the time Jesus died and he resurrected on Sunday, that was a very dark time. That was a very dark, confusing three days. But Sunday came. Sunday came, just like the Word said it would come. And so that's what Dylan would want you to do. The invitation to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and to surrender to him, like he did when he was a kid, and like we did when he, when he rededicated his life in boot camp. Live like Dylan did. So here's a scripture that I'll close with that gives us this blessed assurance. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and verse 13 and 14. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again 
And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. If you want to follow a leader, follow someone like Bill. Follow him by following the Lord Jesus. And you'll be truly united with him, with the Lord in the air. You'll be reunited on that Sunday resurrection. So you're going. I do not say goodbye, brother, but I can see you on Sunday. So you said that Dylan passed from this earth shoulder to shoulder with his best friends, doing the job he always wanted to do, doing the job he was meant to do, and saving lives in the process. If you ask any Marine, this is how we would all choose to go. The word hero should be used very rarely. Not every Marine who serves is a hero. Not every one of us who went into Kabul is a hero. But Dylan Marola is. He would have continued to serve faithfully and would have returned to lead in this community. We can best honor and sacrifice by remembering we all have a part to play in our neighborhoods and even the smallest of actions can have a huge impact because it is the small role that Dylan and 12 others played for us that changed the world for the 30,000 people we saved at the Abbey Gate. And their names and Dylan's names should never be forgotten. It was an honor to serve alongside you, Dylan. I will never forget you. And to the Marola family, Ghost Company will forever be at your service. Everybody has permission to grieve however way it fits you. But what we ask is that you grieve in a way that doesn't hurt yourself or others. And so how do you know whether or not you're grieving in a way that doesn't hurt yourself or others? Well, let's look to your left and your right, right here. And the people that love you and care for you will, will speak truth to you and let you know. And then we say with groups together, just join it in heaven. Hold hands and let's preach together as a family. As the awesome as your family is, everything seems to be together. So this is one more thing we get to do together. We get to do together as a family. Now there's going to be a lot of sad days at the beginning and a few glad days, and then we'll have fewer sad days and then more glad days. And over the years, we'll be able to laugh, fellowship together, go down and down house.
of America, to all who shall see these present readings. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America has awarded the Purple Heart established by General George Washington at Newport, New York, August 7th, 1782. Two, Lance Corporal Dylan R. Marola, United States Marine Corps, for wounds received in action on 26 August 2021 in Afghanistan resulting in his death. Given under my hand in the city of Washington this 27th day of August 2021, signed P.J. Rock, Major General, United States Marine Corps. Whenever we think of Dylan, it's that smile. His huge grin could make you smile on your worst day and his laugh was infectious. Dylan could always make your day a little bit brighter and he always made you feel important. Even when he was having a hard day, Dylan was always there for you. As we drove through the city on Tuesday, seeing families lining the streets to honor him, I marveled at all the people and the thousands who stopped on the 210 freeway, got out of their cars to salute, wave, or simply pay their respects. To so many, Dylan is an incredible hero, providing the ultimate sacrifice by giving his life for many others. I first spoke with Dylan my first weekend after joining the company. He was in front of our building grilling with his friends and I took a moment to speak with them before going home on a Saturday. Dylan was the last in the group to speak and I asked him what he was grilling since he was clearly in charge. With his big goofy smile, he crossed his arms and with the passion of a master chef, told me all about the steak he was cooking up. It was difficult to get four words out of a junior Marine and still a bit more shocking to see one cross his arms instead of being at parade rest for his company commander. But that was Dylan. With the confidence of a used car salesman, he sold me on how special he was right away. At the end of the conversation, I also learned that he's from Rancho Cucamonga, which is where my wife is from. So from there on out, I would always tell him on Friday when I was going home to my in-laws that I better not see him. As I learned from his grandparents yesterday, Dylan was always nervous to run into some captain without a shave or a haircut when he came home. And as I told them, I was always afraid to run into Dylan without a shave while I was in Rancho myself. <laughs> we both held each other accountable in that way. I just wanted to say, you left without a warning, gone technically and young, and now all I have are memories of our past. As I can see, you are loved by so many, some that you might not even know, but in our hearts is where you are. The memories I have throughout the year will last forever, the laughter and tears. My birthdays will never be the same because my wish now will, will be to have you back. I will miss you, brother, so much. So will all the lives that you've, you have touched. This is not goodbye, this is see you later. We all love you and miss you. Until next time, big brother. For the past month, it's been very chaotic. We've been running around in circles, like chickens with their heads cut off. But we've kept laughing, and we're still trying to get ourselves into the air. Honestly, I think Dylan was kind of upset at me for not speaking at the vigil, so I have to make up for it now, somehow, some way. But honestly, the, the one clear memory that I have of him is, as everyone said, is his smile. He always laughed, he always smiled, and he knew how to really care about people. He knew that at the end of the day, everyone needed a shoulder, and he was that shoulder. Like my grandpa says, <laughs> I got big shoulders. And he definitely had the biggest that I know. Honestly, I never expected to be standing in this position, but being here now, I realized that Dylan wouldn't want me to be uh, saying anything sad or making it too long, so I'm gonna make it short, sweet, and simple. Um, we all love you. We miss you. There's a lot of people here for, for you, and it's amazing that we all get to honor you for what you've done. 
for saving lives and being the soldier that you wanted to be. I have so much respect for you and I look up to you as much as you look up to me. I'm really grateful that I could be your brother. My nephew is finally home and he was welcomed by so many in the community. God bless everyone who has shown their support. It's remarkable to watch Dylan be recognized across the country for his bravery. The level of compassion and patriotism we have witnessed has helped comfort my family and I during this devastating time. It was a special moment watching Dylan be sworn into the Marines. We waited in that room for hours, but I couldn't be more proud of him. I've been missing Dylan even before this tragedy. I remember our last conversation. He called Brandon and he, I can't thank you enough for stopping in the hallway so I could talk to him. I told him it was so good to hear his voice and that I was missing him a lot. I cried after because I was worried it would be our last words to each other. Seeing the news and post that day on August 26th broke me. My whole being felt lost. I cried and I prayed all day for his safety. But that night we found out it was our Marine, our Dylan. Dylan is forever a national hero, a fallen U.S. Marine soldier. But our Dylan was an amazing kid, a kid barely 20 years old. He was our Dylan the villain. Out of all of us growing up, he caused the least amount of trouble. He had a light that shined everywhere he went. You could see it in his smile, his eyes, in the way he spoke to people. He was always pleasant. Dylan had such a big heart and he always wanted to help. My baby nephews even helped me move out of my apartment. They aren't babies anymore, but they'll always be that to me. My world stopped, but the world around me hasn't. And when people move on and forget in a month, in six months, I promise I won't. Dylan, I will always remember you and honor your sacrifice and your service to our country. I will always hold on to our memories and our special moments together. Like when you would practice driving in my car and our trips to Mongolian barbecue. I have loved you almost my entire life and I will until the day I die. And even though you are no longer with us, I know you're not alone. I know you're in heaven with your dad and finally get to see how amazing he is. God has you now. I promise to start our family forest for you. And I will keep you with me everywhere I travel to Spencer Clinton. I want to thank each and every one of you who are here today and to all those who have reached out for our family in support of honoring Dylan. I cannot express how much we have been touched by the solidarity of bringing communities, counties, states, and our nation together for all those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice for freedom. A touch of heaven. A baby, born, baby boy was born on April 23rd, 2001, and his name was Dylan Ryan Marola. My daughter, Gabe Cheryl, gave me the privilege and honor to stand by her side to witness his entrance into this world and to see him take his first breath. At that moment, there was a bond between a mother a daughter and a grandchild that will last a lifetime. Dylan's toddler years, as many of us who are grandparents of boys, were filled with matchbox cars, trucks, Legos, and a big, huge smile. He entered his early school years playing community sports, such as basketball and soccer. His love for soccer grew, and it was with the help of some very special coaches in the AYSO organization that made him feel that being part of a team showed commitment to a common goal. We're all for one and one for all. I believe this is the beginning where Dylan realized that it takes a group called a family to achieve its highest potential if they are to succeed. Family, especially ours, has a core that is strengthened by each strand of our individual living and is so tight woven that when one hurts, we all hurt. And when one succeeds, we all succeed. 
This strength begins with Dylan's great-grandparents on both sides, who were able to be a strong influence in his life. Both of his great-grandfathers are Korean War veterans. I think this aided to his love and passion that he had for his country. High school was filled with being a backstage tech support that grew into a role of leadership, trustworthiness, and accountability. This is where he flourished as an individual. He created stage backdrops, managing the lighting and sound, and was given the opportunity to help in the orchestration of all the performances at Los Osos High School. Thank you, Los Osos and Mr. Schwartz, for allowing Dylan to grow from a young student to a senior with a drive, commitment, and a love of being there for others. This, too, was a foundation of him being a United States Marine. In remembering his graduation, the sense of accomplishment was so powerful for us. It made our heart ache with joy and excitement. He followed his path and stayed focused throughout everything that he, that the service put before him and loved every moment that he was serving his country. He would always say, I'm on military time. D is for Dylan. He wanted to make a difference, not only in your own life, but your country. You are a dedicated young man and have the determination to follow your dreams and goals. Why is for your unselfishness? You are so helpful, especially when my family needed task done at our house in Chino. You loved our German Shepherd named Buzz. You would take him on walks when you had time. You also showed our grandson Jonathan how to swim. That was for your love and compassion. When you were growing up, you loved playing and putting Legos together. You even made them move without the instructions of the box. You were mechanically inclined at an early age. You loved drinking Mountain Dew and eating chocolate cake with loads and loads of chocolate frosting. You loved the outdoors, such as fishing and hunting with your mom and immediate family. You had love for your family, your friends, animals, and especially for your country. A is for being an admirable, adorable and attentive angel in the sky. You are a young hero with a beautiful smiling face that would light up the room. You are a breath of sunshine. And represent that you and any service person, past, present or future, and your selflessness hurt will never ever be forgotten. From the bottom of our hearts, God bless you, Dylan. I'm going to miss you so much. And thank you for serving our country. And God bless America. It's the good and it's the glory. A hundred stripes, a hundred swords. It's the Pledge of Allegiance on the 4th of July Get some handwritten letters from home Get some sleepless nights alone It's his newborn baby, he left me in his wife It's the red, white, and blue the fields of Indian to the swamps of Louisiana to the golden coast here in California Uncle Sam's the only family he's got his purple heart he was and his 18th birthday was the day he was born Mr. Red
Please don't have to be brave Just to see this flag still wave Live like Dylan.